Tonight we'll be continuing in the fifth chapter of Ephesians. If you go through this, you'll see there's quite a number of exhortations in this text, this chapter. Now, as you may or may not know and should know, Satan has sent out a flood of false teaching to neutralize the effect of sound doctrine. And by sound doctrine, I mean doctrine that is based upon the apostles' doctrine. See, the apostles' doctrine, which are the apostles' affirmations pertaining to Christ. The apostles' doctrine is not their teaching about human conduct, although they did do that, or domestic concerns. That's not the apostles' doctrine. Because those other things vary from person to person, but the Apostles' Doctrine has to do with the expounding of Christ, his, the relevancy of his death, burial, and resurrection, and the pertinency of his present reign. That's the Apostles' Doctrine, and they're all affirmations. None, none of them are like conclusions. They're, they're affirmations, statements of truth. And this flood of erroneous teaching, erroneous, sometimes it's an erroneous emphasis, that Satan has sent out is to neutralize the Apostles' Doctrine, to get people to kind of yeah. push it back because you can never be made stable by some other doctrine. Let's, let's be quite clear about this. You cannot experience spiritual stability or truly successful living by embracing any teaching other than that of the Apostles. Teaching is not based upon their affirmations. is not sound doctrine. In fact, it's doctrine that's rotten at the core and will pollute whoever embraces it. Now today, in spite of the fact that we are living in a time when there's a staggering plentitude of divine resources in there still is a phenomenal lack of understanding of the truth. It's, I do not cease to be staggered by this. Sometimes it's a, I'm alarming the people that don't understand it. You would think would after all of the years that they've claimed identity with Christ. But it's due to this satanic attempt to neutralize. It's not always like big, big obvious departures from the truth. Sometimes they're just slanted this way or that way. What has happened is there's been a climate of toleration created so that you could, you have a right to believe whatever you want to believe. I mean, it's, it's a toleration. People are willing to tell you, well, if you want that's the way you want to believe it, then that's it's your business. Everyone has a right to choose what they believe and so forth. And this kind of atmosphere exists. And if you haven't picked up on it, well, you need to pick up on it. See, this type of perspective disarms people. You, there's, no, there's no real need to put on the gospel armor because each person is sort of operating on his own and we're all free and, you know, we live in a free country. and So there's really no need to put on gospel armor. But see, this is a misstatement of the case. By comparison, you'll note that the apostles and Jesus, they, would all, they wouldn't say very much unless they sound some warning of some kind, mm -hmm. some exhortation of some kind. Don't be deceived. Yeah. That's that response. You have the responsibility not to be deceived. Amen. That's laid on you squarely. Uh -huh. Amen. See to it that you're not deceived, Jesus. That's your responsibility now. You say, well, I need some help on this. Well, I understand that, but you've got, you've got to see to it. You've got to see to it that our text is going to deal with that tonight. <laughs> you see, Ephesians 5, 6 
through eight, I believe. Six. Yeah, six through eight. Let no, let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. I'm sure you have seen the potency of some of the statements that are made here. See, because of the disarming nature of the flesh, and the flesh is tenacious and consistent, you will not let up. You, surely you have learned this by this. By this time, you should have learned this, that the flesh will not let up. It keeps on trying to make inroads every time. You, every time you give it an opportunity, he'll rush right in. And because of that, Paul's going to give some instructions concerning the militant stance of the believer. We all should be nice and kind and so forth. It's not right to be contentious and mean and unkind, and we understand that. When it comes to the things of God, you have to adopt a militant stance. You have to be prepared to fight off yes, amen. any kind of thought that is thrown your way that will neutralize your faith or, yeah. or cause you to be less sensitive or less alert. Amen. <laughs> the enemy is shrewd, see, and Satan never gets discouraged. Everybody understands this, don't you? Satan never gets discouraged. He gets angry, doesn't get discouraged. Men get discouraged. God doesn't get discouraged. Angels don't get discouraged. Men, they get discouraged. So if you have a triumph over Satan, he doesn't go off in a corner and cry. He just regroups and comes back with some more potent stuff. That's the way Satan is. Now notice what he says. <laughs> let no man now this is a kind of a expression that requires continuous exposition it's a phrase that there really isn't any appropriate English expression that says what this really is saying let no man some other versions say do not let anyone one says, stop letting anyone. The basic Bible, English says, do not be deceived, is the idea. Don't let yourselves be taken in, the message Bible says. Uh, right away that tells you there are forces out there that are trying to deceive you and trying to take you in. It may not seem like it, but they are. They are. They're out there. And they're tireless. They're tireless. They don't let, let up. Now this form of expression isn't common in the Western world. It doesn't have to do with the existence of a thing, but with the total ruling out of such influence. That is to say, don't let any man deceive you. It doesn't mean you can get rid of deceivers. <laughs> that is what <laughs> I shoot them, that'd be it. That's, that's not what it means. It means you are not allowed in Christ the right to allow them to influence you. Which means you have to know what's going on, what's being said. You have to have some kind of sense about it. <coughs> this indicates to us that the new creation or the new man or whatsoever is born of God is stated a number of ways in Scripture is in fact superior. Amen. Yeah. This can be done. Yea, this must be done. Amen. Let no man uh, deceive you. Because life is lived by faith, which connects you with Christ, inimical forces, or forces that are against you, when they come up against you, technically they're coming up against Christ. Yeah. 
See, if you're, if you're living by faith and you're living under Christ, the first thing they confront is Christ. So we're saying don't let any person deceive you. This, is, this does not only mean be alert and look around. It means make sure you're, you're secure with Jesus. Make sure there's nothing between you and Christ. And Christ can get pretty particular. You know this from the Gospels. Why do you call me good? It can get pretty particular. Who made me a ruler over you? See thou to that. Let the dead bury their dead. He can be very specific. Why do doubts arise in your heart? Why are you disputing, by the way? See, Jesus? <laughs> You can get very specific. So getting close to Jesus means you get more of that kind of stuff, more of that specificity. So some people, they kind of back off because it's, they're kind of intimidated by this. But actually, it's wonderful that Jesus does this. That means you don't have to live with Amen. things that separate you from God. Amen. Amen. Now when they assault Cry, uh, the people of God, they're, uh, they're in effect attacking Christ, even though Satan nor the demons directly attack Christ. That's not their, they're afraid to do it. They were even afraid to do it, it was in the body. They were afraid to do it. Except that one night when the power of darkness had some time to... But when they come up against you, I don't think that Satan doesn't see this like you see it. Like you're in Christ. He doesn't see the ramifications of this. He keeps on, and he's frustrated. The Lord Jesus just puts him off, you know. But he doesn't, Satan can't learn. That's right. He can't, you can't teach Satan at all. He can't learn at all. Which is a disadvantage to us if you take Christ out of the picture. This is an extreme disadvantage to us. But Christ, of course, is not in the picture. So you do not allow anyone to deceive you by indirection. Mm -hmm. You do it by focusing on your identity with Christ, seeing that you remain, abide in Him and, and don't depart from Him and that in that way you're, you will not allow anyone to deceive you. Now let's look at this word, let no man deceive you. Other versions say, turn you from the right way, or be fooled, or trick you, or delude and deceive you. The word deceive means, literally, to cheat, beguile, trick, and delude and deceive. The, the idea is, they get you to think there's another legitimate road yeah, yeah. <laughs> than the one way. I mean, it could be a lot of things. It could, could be a family, it could be a child, it could be a job, it could be a hobby. It's a lot of things it could be. But they'd get you off on a, by, on a bypath. It's really a road, and sometimes it bears remarkable similarity to a highway of holiness, but it's, that's, what, that's what deception is. Deception isn't just they told you something and it wasn't true. That's involved, but they told you something that caused you to get off the path and lose your focus from Christ. To fool you, that'd be like convincing you that fool's gold was really gold. And there have been people, there have been people been convinced of this. Takes just as much effort to hammer and pound fool's gold out of the vein as, a, as it does real gold. And some people spend a lot of time hammering and wearing himself and take it out to the merchant. He says, this isn't even gold. This is fool's gold. See, it takes a lot of effort just to even to embrace false teaching. you got to expend a lot of your person to embrace false teaching. Be deceived. You think you got the real thing, but you, but you don't. You think you look in your wallet and you think you have a lot of, I got a lot of money and they're counterfeit bills. But, but you don't learn what's false at the point of hearing. Not the kind of thing he's talking about here. It's at the point where you try and use it. That's when you find out it's false. 
See, you know a counterfeit bill is a counterfeit bill and you try and spend it. Some of them say, hey, this, this isn't any good. You gotta take this back. See, there's some religion that doesn't work. But we're living in a day when people have got accustomed to religion not working. They're used to this. They expect it to fail. They hire all kind of people to work with the, these failings. All kind of specialists, all kind of counselors, all kind of psychiatrists. They hire them because their religion isn't working. Why isn't it? Because it's deception. They bought something that wasn't real. They accepted something that wasn't real. Your mandate, don't you be like that. Don't you allow yourself to buy into some teaching or some perspective that is false. And it will let you down to the hour in crisis. When you, want, when you want it to work, it'll fail and you'll fall. In matters pertaining to life and godliness, deception, as I have said, is confirmed not at the point of hearing, but at the point of putting it to use, trying to utilize it. Deception puts a person on the wrong road, and no matter how you think about it, that road will never take you to the appointed destination for believers. It's a road where transgression is common and errors in judgment are inevitable. A lot of errors in judgment, I've made enough of these kind of errors, I know what I'm talking about. A lot of errors in judgment can be traced back to errors in doctrine. My own case, I was rather young, but I was too simplistic in my theology. It was too simple. So what happened is I got, I went through some experiences I wouldn't have had to have gone through if I would just have realized that everything's not what it appears to be. That's why Jesus said, don't judge according to appearance. Deception doesn't make a person sin. It puts a person in a situation where that's all they can do yeah. is sin. Yeah. Because, you see what? This is Satan's subtlety. See, Satan, Satan can't make anybody sin. Yeah. Yeah. That's why he uses deception. If he could, he wouldn't have to deceive them. He'd just make them sin. That's all. But he, he can't do that. So he uses deception to lead them off into an area where sin is easy or easier. Maybe you'd like to say it's easier. And how, let no man deceive you with vain words or empty words. They're like buckets that don't have any water in, water in them. It's like a hot air, hot air balloon. You don't use a hot air balloon for a seat cushion, right? Because it doesn't hold up under pressure. Well, that's the way these vain words are. They don't hold up under pressure. See, they don't hold up, up under pressure. And life is filled with pressure, as you know. Empty talk. It's just jabber. Empty arguments. That is, they argue about stuff that when they come to a conclusion, it's so what? I mean, who, ca who cares what the answer to this is? Who was Cain's wife? Well, who cares? But there are people spend years arguing about stuff like this, you know. Should we use an instrument in music or should we not use an instrument? Some people don't. I belong to a group that for 150 years they've been arguing about this and they're still arguing and it never has been solved and they're still arguing about it. Huh? Empty arguments. They produce deception. It's just not that we don't agree. Somebody's deceived. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Somebody's got off the road because of these arguments. Empty, meaningless words or groundless arguments. These are words that aren't true. When you take the yardstick of truth and you lay it alongside of them, they come up short. They don't, they don't, they don't measure up. They may deal with immorality by saying attracted to the opposite or attracted to the same sex. Mm -hmm. yeah. Instead of saying lusted. Yeah, yeah. See? That's right. 
See? This is how they talk about they they invent words, homosexual, that's a that's a <laughs> it's a human psychiatric term. They invent words that take the edge away. And they're, they're empty talk. Mm -hmm. But here, what happened? These empty words deceive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They they dis they dislodge people from Christ. Yeah. They move people off the road to holiness. They're just they're just not points of view that we argue about. It's it's more than that. Emphasis is more than that. Vain words with vain words. They understate the contemptibleness of sin. They understate it, and in so doing, they, they, they shift the focus of God's people. Mm -hmm. I don't let anyone deceive you with vain words. Don't allow this to happen. So how can I be sure? That's your business. That's your business. That's part of your mandate. Make sure nobody deceives you. Whatever it takes, do it. Whatever it takes, do it. There's not a series of steps we could give you to accomplish this. That's too easy. Some people say, well, I first go home and check it out with the Bible. Well, there may be a Bible verse that seems to say that. That somebody twisted and rested. So it isn't just that you compare what they say with what's said in the Scripture. You have to know that what the Scripture is saying. See, it's a lot different. There's, there's a certain sound mm -hmm. that truth has. Yes, and when there's words, words of deception, it clashes with that so it doesn't sound right. Sister Barbara. Something else I was thinking of in the same manner of thinking is knowing the substance of the words. Uh -huh. That's right. The, the message that the words That's carry. Right. Because I was considering the difference between these vain words and, as Scripture speaks, spiritual words. Mm -hmm. sure. The spiritual words yeah. have such substance that they are they're packed full of truth so that there's no room yeah. for mm -hmm. anything else to enter in. That's good. But these vain words, they're lacking. And they, they leave opportunity for Satan to enter through them That's good. because they lack the truth. Excellent. It's about Jeremy and Sister Tasha. Going back to what you were talking about with the counterfeit money, and um, I th I'm pretty sure you're the one, first one I heard you say this before, is how do you know a counterfeit when you study the real thing? Yes, right. Now, you can take a counterfeit, and then you say, well, see, this is just like the real one, but there might be something just a little bit off. Yeah. Now, a lot of it might be exactly, it might be identical, but there's just something a little bit off to make it counterfeit. This is what we're talking about, is when somebody says, well, look, I can take you to a scripture, yeah. but what they're saying is it's a little bit off, and that makes it all wrong. Yeah, amen. Sister Pastor? Along those same lines, um, Jesus said that my people will hear my voice, and they won't follow That's another. That's right, amen. amen. So mm -hmm. if you're far from the Lord, then you're more susceptible to yeah. following after right. these vain words. But yes. if you're near him, Yes. If a vain word is spoken, you'll be able to tell what source yep. it's from. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sometimes the only thing you'll be able to tell at first is that it doesn't sound right. Yeah. It doesn't fit in. Yeah. See, it doesn't blend. And that may be at first pretty much what you see. But as you ponder it, then you'll, you'll see that it's more than you thought. Amen. It's off more than you right. thought. Yeah. Yeah, uh, 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 the true mm -hmm. sense of the counterfeit for talking about money is that it wasn't issued by the government. It didn't have gra uh -huh. the right appearance, but it wasn't issued by the right the right person, the right group yeah. of people. That, and so it was counterfeit. It yeah. wasn't didn't originate from them. And this these kind of doctrines, they haven't come from Christ. Amen. They haven't. They're, they've come from somebody else, but they look, they appear to have yeah. come from them. That's right. Brother Gavin. Yes. If you if you know the truth then you'll be more apt to let no man deceive you. That's right. Because if, if you know the truth, if there's anything that's not like the truth, as Brother Jeremy was saying, it may be almost identical, but one little detail throws the whole thing off. That's if right. you know the truth mm -hmm. and hear a lie, if you know the truth well enough, you can tell yeah. that, that Amen. what you're hearing is a lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can tell, but... 
Yeah, that's why you have to modify this is because Adam and Eve knew the truth. That's right. Didn't they? Yes, they did. They knew what were they knew what this tree was prohibited. They knew they'd die if they'd eat it. See, so it's how subtle yeah. Satan is. Mm -hmm. It's a, so they do they did know mm -hmm. from the from God Himself. Right. But they didn't perceive. Mm -hmm. They they listen. If you listen to the devil, he'll deceive you. Right. Just give him your ear. Yeah. Just start thinking about, well, I don't see anything wrong with that, and pretty soon, yeah. he's got you. Because yeah. that isn't the way, this is not the way God reasons. There isn't anything wrong with that. This isn't even how God reasons. He reasons up, this is right. There's a lot of difference between saying, this is right, and this isn't wrong. See, there's a lot of difference. Satan doesn't say, this is the right thing. He says, there's no law against this. Think about now, if you can just, if he can just hook you, that's right. okay, and then he, if you just get your attention and hook you, yeah. and then he can just start kind of just reeling you. That's right. Uh -huh. Reeling that's you right. right on there real get slow. Get that hook stunk in there yeah, deep. That's right. that's right. All right, now these, now he tells you how they're going to use the vain words. But now he's going to take you to the reason why you can't let yourself be deceived. It isn't because their words aren't true. That's not the bottom line. Is because of these things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> God has a certain reaction to things that have been mentioned. Do you remember what some of them were? Fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, filthiness, foolish talking, inappropriate jesting, a whoremonger, an unclean person, a covetous person. Now a person may be deceived on whether they can or can't do these things. But he says, you must remember that whatever you may think about this, uh -huh. God has a certain fixed response Amen. to these sins. And if you commit them, you get the response. Amen. Strong reasoning now. Because of these things, because of these things, not because you were obstinate, or not, not because maybe you didn't understand, because you'd be cut. These were all things people do. Remember? These were all things people did. Because of these things comes the wrath of God. They're like a latch. God's wrath is shut off by Christ. See? When you hit by Christ in God, deliver the wrath to come. There's a handle on the door, on the inside. If you commit these deeds, you open that door and wrath's on the way to you. Amen. The only escape is to repent and do the first work. See, that's the only... <laughs> and you, but you don't know whether you'll even be able to do this. Maybe the thing's gone too far. Amen. The wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Yes. Yes. You won't know to ask for a forgiveness for. Until it comes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you know it. See, yeah. when, when it says the wrath of God, he's never talking about something temporary. When God's wrath is unleashed, it's not like discipline. Mm -mm. It's destruction. You said, if you know your Bible, you, you have to know the scripture, know this. Every time God's wrath is mentioned, there was destruction. It wasn't like a spanking or chastening. That's not what God's wrath is. When God's wrath, this part of his nature that's repelled by iniquity is awakened when people commit it. And between the time it goes forth and the time it was enacted, the deed was done. If there's not repentance, Ananias and Sapphira will die. 70,000 men will die from Dan to Beersheba in Israel. 24,000 will die in a plague broke out because of iniquity. See, it's when wrath, Sodom and Gomorrah will be burned up. When God's wrath is unleashed, <laughs> whatever you have to do to stop that from happening, you do it. Amen. Wrath of God cometh upon the children 
of disobedience. What's, what are they, why do you call them children of disobedience? These are the kind of children these vain words produced. Just like the Word of God is the spermatozoan of the kingdom of God, vain words are the spermatozoan of the kingdom of Satan. Yes, and it, they produce yes. children of disobedience. Yes. Children that disobey. That's what they produce. Satan's deceptions, even though on the surface they may seem rather mild, they, they make people disobedient. They produce disobedience. And God's already, you know from the very first man and woman what God, how God reacts to disobedience. Uh -huh. yes, amen. But see, there's a, there's a God today being preached that doesn't react like that to disobedience. Right. Yeah. <laughs> disobedience isn't all that bad in the minds of people, but it is all that bad. Because yes, the wrath of God comes against the children of disobedience. So when sin breaks out like a flood within the professed church and it's not stopped by appropriate action, it can invariably be traced to wrong teaching and God's going to retaliate. Amen. That's right. See, some people, they stick it off in conclaves try and figure out why the church is so dead. Why, why is it we have such problems in the church? And they, they get caucuses and they talk about this and try and th the reason is because the wrong stuff's been said. Amen. That's why. Yeah. And yes, it didn't appear that way at first. That's what that's why it's called deception. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's reason number one. Don't let any man deceive you. Because if if you let him deceive you, God's wrath is on the way. Yes thinking that there's kind of a philosophy out there that I've heard many Christians talk about when they sin. Instead of calling it sin, they call it making bad choices. Yes, I've heard that too. And it yes. really softens. Yes, yes it does. Mm -hmm. yes. Not so bad. That's yeah. right. Man, a mistake. Then yes. a mistake is another. We yeah, made a man. mistake. Yeah. yeah. And if you stand up for the truth, you're a legalist. Yeah. <laughs> you're immediately bringing yeah. in today's current. Yeah. Yeah. You're a legalist if you stand. That's up Satan's truth. deception. See, he he yeah. makes it not so bad. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Because as soon as people think it's not so bad, they're more apt to do it. Yeah. Amen. As soon as they find out the wrath of God's against uh -huh. us, yeah, that that changes your <laughs> that changes yeah. your attitude. See. Anybody who's serious and living in this generation, they, they, they've been actually been able to testify and witness that these vain words that we just talked about, yeah. they did lead people to do things that they would not have done yeah. had somebody told them the truth. Amen. They wouldn't have done it. Amen. Truth makes you, when you know the truth, it makes you free. Amen. Amen. When you know the lie, it makes you a slave. <laughs> Be not therefore... In view what we just said, don't be not there for partakers with them. So here's be not. There's again what you are, not what you do. Don't be has to do with what you are, not what you do. Be not. Here's a classification of the saints of God. They are to consistently and successfully avoid being a partaker. Being joined to these kind of people. Any divine acquirement is matched, to understand, by supplies that enable you to do what God says. So when He says, "Be not partakers," there's there's resources in the all things pertaining to life and godliness, and all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. There's resources to enable you to do this. Amen. So this is not done in human energy or as an exercise of the willpower. <coughs> Done by availing yourself of the resources that have been supplied. <coughs> now and whenever the Lord delivers a word like this, the first and primary thing to do is believe what he said. Believe what he said. Take it in without any kind of reservation. Amen. Any necessity for additional explanation. Just take it in just like it said. Take it in and believe it. Then you'll be able to set out to fulfill it. I don't believe this has been uh, recognized in the modern church. I don't think they've been persuaded of this. 
this indicates there's been a lot of vain words because see this this is the this is the right track when he says don't be partakers of so he said amen lord I'm with you on this, Lord. I'm not going to be that's on the right road. When there's been vain words, they say, well, what do you mean, Lord? What, what, do you, what do you mean by that? That's, that's when the person's already been heard vain words. Caused him to question what God said. How do you do this, Lord? How can this be done? He, those are all lingering at the foot of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They're all dialoguing with the devil. Because God won't talk to you on this subject like this. He won't say, now here's how you do it. You've got to stop going here and you've got to stop going there. And you've got to stop saying this, you've got to start saying that. He always points you to the Son and says what Mary said, whatever he tells you. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> That's the way it is in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> It seems to me that it's time well spent for a person to ask, what am I? He said, you know, he said, be what we're to be, he said earlier, be. Now he says, don't be. So it's good to ask yourself, question, what, what, what am I? Am I a new creation? If you want to ask yourself questions, ask yourself questions like this. Am I a new creation? Am I the workmanship of God? Is, am I the kind of thing God produces? Have, have old things passed away for me? Have all things become new for me? Am I seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Has God promised eternal life to a person like me? Yeah. yeah. You don't think he's going to give eternal life to someone he hasn't promised it to, do you? So you ask yourself, am I... Can I stand before God and say, I'm the kind of person you promised eternal life to? Well, if you're resting in the sun, you're believing on the sun, you're fighting the good fight of faith, you're living by faith, you're walking in the spirit, yes, you can say, yes, this, this is the kind of person Amen. God will give eternal life to. So it's thoroughly acquainted with what I am and what I am not. So it's just good self-examination. Be ye not, there, be ye not therefore. All right, here's another one of those reasoning words that reflect divine logic, kingdom logic. Vain words never move a person to think like this. That's right. Truth does. Yes. Moves a person to think like this. They never lead a person to think, who will the Lord receive and who will he not receive? That's not how deception doesn't work that way. Deception didn't move Eve to say, I wonder if I'll live or die if I eat this fruit. See, it doesn't lead a person to think like this. So as soon as a person thinks, well, I mean, it looks kind of safe to do this. Uh, I can't find anything in particular in the Bible against this. This isn't how truth leads a person to think. This is how deception leads a person to think. Therefore... God has spoken on the matter with particular mention of the kind of people he will not receive. I'll name some of them from different texts. The fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars. They'll all have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. Then there's fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, Abuses of themselves with mankind, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, and extortioners. There's, see, there's no way these people can be saved. Yeah. You got to get out of this category or you can't be saved. Okay. I, that straightforward. Here's some more idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. <laughs> that no man deceive you. Because, yeah. Such do not inherit the kingdom of God. See, so it's very clear about this. These are all things that are expressions. So what if the church says, well, but they feel sorry for people like this? They say, well, poor, she's only 15. Poor girl. She's only 15. Now she's out, out of wedlock mother. And, you know, she had to do a lot of sinning to get to that point. 
because you can't commit adultery accidentally. You got to plot and plan and sneak and hide and reject the word of God and forget what little you knew about God and see all these sins. This is this is all a prelude to them. But see the people today, church people, try and get you to feel sorry for people like this. It's not that you should be have animosity. I'm not suggesting that. What I'm saying is you got to know what the case really is. This is a very, 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 very hard, callous person who did this. They resisted the Holy Spirit. They shunned the love of God. They shut off the truth in their minds. See, it's an exceptionally hard, callous, like concrete person that commits these sins. Otherwise, God wouldn't have such a reaction. Look what Ananias and Sapphira had to do to lie. They had to consult with each other, concoct a plan, and agree to carry it out. Yeah. Then in before, before the brethren say something that wasn't true. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Therefore, so God spoke them plainly. They do what God said. Don't be partakers. And what is it that we're not to be? We're not to be partakers with them. Other versions say partners associated with them. Do not associate with them. Have no part with them. Fellow partakers, companions with them. Throw in your lot with them. Sharers with them. Joint partners, participants with them. What if they're your family? Does that like negate that? If they're your family, does that negate this? Does it? Mm -hmm. Now, all kinds of people say it does, think it does. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Go back under the law and see if it negated it. Mm -hmm. Their parents had to go out and stone their children. Yeah. I don't imagine it was a like an easy task. Yeah. Well, what he was saying, he was teaching people something. You can't look favorably upon transgression because some member of your family did it. Or a close friend of yours at work did it, or whatever. However you want to look at it, don't be part. You can't be partakers. You can't identify yourself with these people. Yes, amen. You cannot do it. There's a depth of meaning here that will escape the casual reader. <laughs> the Corinthians were told, mentioned some of these type of sins that don't even eat with them. So there'd be nothing wrong with eating with them. Go and have a meal and talk with them about the Lord. Oh, they've already been talked with about the Lord for who knows how long. Man, it's a brother. It's a, man, it's a brother. He says, like, don't eat with them. Don't eat with them. Don't see that. Don't, don't partake with them. Why? Don't partake with them. Don't do it. Why? Because you're part, you'll, be a, you'll get what they get. That's why. Now, John, he... John touches on this too, he, and he comes at it pretty seriously. He says, if anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, is disloyal to what Jesus Christ taught, do not receive him, do not accept him, do not welcome or admit him into your house, or bid him Godspeed, or give him any encouragement, he who wishes him success, who encourages him, wishes him Godspeed, is a partaker. Mm -hmm. yes. You say, well, I, they come to my house, and I, they look like they're pretty sincere people, they're honest people. We invited them in, I witnessed to them about Christ. Well, what? Just what do you do with this? Do you cut this out of the Bible? Is that what you do? He said, don't let them in your house. That's what he said. Why do you say that? Because that act breaks down your resistance. And pretty soon they look more innocent than they really are. So if you're going to talk, talk on a porch. This is what I, this is what I, this is how I personally. We don't, there's some people I'll not talk with them in here. Talk with them on the porch or maybe outside the gate out there. Not in here. my own testimony. When I had fallen away, my mother, I heard through the grapevine, she wouldn't talk to me. Yeah. And she, she said, Robert is dead. 
Now, that was a hard thing. Oh, yeah. It was a hard thing for her. You know, we've oh, talked yeah. about this since then. But that was very instrumental. Oh, yeah. Because I saw it was, something was serious. I did not know what was wrong. I was deceived. I did not know it was so, as severe as what it was. Yeah. But when I got this word, it caused me to think, what have I done that was... Yeah. Then, but see, this was... It was it was instrumental anyway. That's right. In helping me to come back. See, when we... When we say be not partakers of them, there's with them. There's two things that are possible, both but possible. Or one is don't join with them in a common effort, so you're identified with them. Yes. That's the ones who commit the sins. The other is the ones who gave the vain words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in my judgment, both of them are true. You're not to partake with either one of them. If they partake in vain, if they teach vain words, you like you don't go to their church. Period. You don't read their books. Period. It's the way it is. You say, well, this seems awful critical. Well, it is a critical matter. If the wrath of God's against people that commit these deeds and I join hands with them in any way, then I put myself in danger. So yes, it is a serious thing, and it looks like it's hypercritical, and people will judge you to be very foolish if you actually do this. But you're protecting yourself, and you explain that to people. Look, I'm not doing this because I have this vendetta against Joe Blow, or because I have an inveterate hatred for him. I'm doing this to protect my soul. That's why I'm doing this, because I'm not strong enough to detect all the subtleties that accompany vain words. So when I detect their vein, the ones who teach them, I say, I don't want to invite them to dinner. And the ones who accepted them and committed the deeds, I don't want to invite them either. You say, well, how are we going to reach them? There's other ways to reach them. And you remember that there's been a lot of other people trying to reach them too. You're not the first one. So a lot of loose thought on this matter. <coughs> Be not all oh, therefore, in view of the fact the wrath of God is coming against them, don't, don't partake. Don't be a partaker with them. Now he has a, a third layer of reason, which is even stronger. The first layer was those who do such things, wrath of God's against them, see. Second layer, if you partake with them, then what God gives them, he gives you too. If you're in Sodom when it's destroyed, you'll get burned up too. See? The third one is this third layer. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Four. Again, see, this is this reasoning language. Because of what you are, what because of what you have become in Christ, don't be deceived. See? Because of what you are in Christ. <laughs> now this is an exceptionally strong verse. You were sometimes darkness. Notice he doesn't say you were in darkness. Some versions do read that way. That's not what it says. You were darkness. Other versions say you were once darkness. You were formerly darkness. You were nothing but darkness. That's Weymouth. You were darkness itself. That's Williams. You were sheer darkness. That's Goodspeed. Now there are some variant translations that modify it. Here's some of them. God's Word Bible and the Christian, the New Century Bible says, you lived in the dark. That's not what it says. Living Bible says, your heart was full of darkness. That's not what it says. English Revised Version says, you were full of darkness. That's not what it says. Message Bible says you groped your way through the murk once. It says you were yeah. darkness. Yeah. Your presence shrouded the truth. Huh? There are, that's what we once were. We, were. we once were darkness. We were like a mobile black sky. We were like the darkness that covered the deep. Wherever we were, it, it obscured the truth. You were sometimes darkness. We were a dark environment. We, we were not in a dark environment. 
we were the dark environment. We were contaminate. See, we were co contaminating. We were what vain words produce. Yeah. See, God's words that let there be light. Pff, Satan's vain words let there be darkness. See, same thing. Satan produces darkness. God could not work favorably in us. We were darkness. See, before the creation started a light, there had to be light. We were the antithesis of God. God is light. We were darkness. We were exact, <laughs> exact opposite of God. So we of all people that have been on both sides, we ought to know <laughs> the danger of being dark and deceived and off the path. And we, we of all people ought to know what that means, what that entails. But now are ye light in the Lord. <coughs> Several versions read, you are light itself. That's some statement. Most versions read, you are light. Variant versions say you are filled with light. That's, that's not what it says. You are people of the light. That's not what it says. You are full of light. That's not what it says. Message Bible says you're out in the open now. The bright light of Christ makes your path plain. That's just like babble. You are light. Now, now, now. Well, this parallels Jesus says you are the light. <laughs> right? It's what he said. You're the light of the world. Instead of John the Baptist, he was a burning and shining light. John the Baptist. As his presence, his presence, as well as his words, shed light. Made God more clear. Made his will more clear. What we are in Christ, who is the light himself, is a derived light. I mean, we didn't produce this, but it is light. We are light. We are a light source. That's why Jesus commissioned Paul to open men's eyes and turn them from darkness to light. See, that normally you think that's something Jesus did, but Jesus is in his people and does it in them. <laughs> Paul crafts his words and his expression very carefully. He says, ye, as plural. Right? He didn't say, you, Stephanus, are light. <laughs> right. It says, ye, plural, are light. The body of Christ. Yeah. Amen. Not just the individual members. No members of Christ's body has all the light. Mm -hmm. But all of them together is targeted to be, in the end, uh -huh. a full, thorough, Revelation of the light of Christ. Amen. Christ's person, just as yeah. Jesus, God is duplicated in Jesus, Jesus is duplicated in his body. Amen. And it's Amen. that sense, ye are light. He doesn't, Jesus said, ye are the light of the world, but that, this text goes further than that. Ye are light. Amen. You are where Jesus lives. Yes. Amen. And it, it'll be full and uninhibited completely before it's over. But when you use vain words, Jesus can't live there. Jesus doesn't work through vain words. Huh? He doesn't employ divine power to back up vain words. So if you have a false teaching, it's not going to be supported by heaven. Amen. Something sent by hell isn't supported by heaven. Yes. This is why um, he's gathering all things together into one, because the the, the member of the body yeah. loses its effectiveness as long as it's estranged from the body. That's right. But when it's part of the body, then that gift or that thing that he has is effective. Amen. Yeah. Now you remember when uh, the church is glorified in the Revelation. John saw it coming down out of heaven from God. In Revelation 21, 2, 21, 11, and it says, She had the glory of God. Amen. Huh? That's the light he's talking about here. 
Well, I love the truth of it. Now, what are the implications? I'm going to say something. Okay. What What are the implications of being light? Now, are ye light in the Lord? We're to understand that what can be seen of God is perfectly and completely seen in Christ. And as pertains to this text, what may be seen of Christ is seen in his body. Amen. Yeah, now that's why God gave you Apollos and Paul. Who are they? They're, they're servants by whom you believe, whom God has given to every man. See, so if you want to know about Christ, you've got to go to his body. You can't ignore his body and come at this because his body is the light. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's going to be the full light. It's in the development stage. Yeah. Now, the message of Christ and the gospel as it pertains to him is in the hands of the church. It's not in the hands of the Bible publishers. Mm -hmm. It's not in the hands of the Bible translators. Right. It's in the hands of the church. They're the ones that have been distributed the goods. See, that's why a church that is not making everybody in that area cognizant of the Word of God is an unfaithful body of people. Amen. That's what they're here for. Yeah. <laughs> now this is stated another way in 2 Corinthians 3, 3.3. 3. Ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. Now he doesn't say you are epistles. Mm -hmm. Notice. Yeah. <laughs> it says ye are the epistle. We're not letters, we're letter. So if you want to know what Christ has to say, he says it through his people in whom his word is abiding and, and living. The Soma said of things like this, this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes that this could happen. Now how many, this is just a rhetorical question, but how many churches do you suppose there are who a person could come into it and because of what was happening among the people, not on the platform, because of what was happening among the people, he would conclude God is in you of a truth. Yeah. I mean, see, you'll have to admit, it, it's not as many as it should be. That'd be the most gentlemanly way to say it. So now that we see the facts of the case, don't let yourself be deceived. Because the wrath of God's coming on people to do these things. Don't be partakers of them, with them, because if you are, the wrath that comes on them will come on you too. And don't forget you once were uh -huh. darkness. You've been delivered from that, now you are light. So what's the conclusion? Walk as children of light. Amen. Or live as children of light. When people see you and me, they must not become confused about Christ. Yes. Amen. Yeah. They say, well, if that's the way, yeah. they must not. Our lives must present an accurate picture of who Christ is, of his death and of his life. Both of them have to be lived out in us. It has to be, a, whether they accept it or not, that's another matter. But that, at this point, we walk as children of light. We walk primarily as an exhibition of what the Lord can do in a person. Amen. That's the logical outcome of the whole matter. That's, I don't see how you could come to any other conclusion. Now it's the aim of Satan to distort the understanding of Christ while the aim of the believer is by his life and by his words and by their collectively, their words and their lives, to clarify Christ and to live it out so that people can see it 
because you're a living letter Amen. of Christ. Well, that will give us something to think upon. It's, uh, <laughs> it's quite a weighty subject, to be, be perfectly frank. Yeah. And you read things like, you are light. I mean, this, that's, yeah. ye are light. Yeah. Not get light, you are light. Not you ought to be light, you are light. Mm -hmm. So let's be uh, living by this. In other words, get out of your life anything that blocks the light. Amen. Anything that makes it easy to have a wrong idea about Christ. Like, well, Christ must be not too particular. Boy, if he, God could save him, he could save anybody. You know? Well, I understand if you come from a bad background how that could be true. But you've got to get to the point to say, so that's what Jesus does. So that's what he produces in somebody. And believe me when I tell you, there are souls, more souls than you think, out there that are, that are yearning to see somebody like this. Amen. There are. There's people like Queen of Sheba who come a long distance just to find out, is this, is this real? And it'll make a big difference. So you shine brightly, walk as children of light, and have this persuasion that somebody in your vicinity is waiting to see somebody like you. And they that see me, they will be glad when they see me. That's what David said one time. They'll be glad when they see me. And may that be your, uh, your experience, to have actually have that. I've had it in regards to other people that I've seen, and just say, whoa, I was glad I got to see people like that. You be a person like that. You can. Brother Jeremy. Yeah, I was very blessed to see this, how he says, for ye were sometimes <laughs> darkness, but now but ye now. are light in the Lord. In the Lord. This is the way we were, but now because of the Lord, we are light. That's right. <coughs> he, he's the one that made us this way. But Amen. We are. <coughs> we are. We are. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Brother Ricky. It's one of the important keys to being able to overcome sin is to be able to detect the contrariety between sin and yourself. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. good. Because Amen. If you, really, if you don't know that you're of God, you will not be able to do this. Mm -hmm. But that's that's a that's like a, a quick red flag. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, this is like a foreign thing coming in. This, yeah. this isn't who I am in Christ Jesus. And that's one thing that, that puts you in a quick resistance mode mm -hmm. that's right. against these kind of things. Amen. Amen. Now, another thing, Brother Jim, that I see there is, is this is the mercy and kindness of the Lord. See, someone, somebody say, well, hey, that's kind of mean. No, no. This is the kindness of the Lord. They draw those yeah. out of the darkness. Because if you, if, you, if you accept them just the way they are, well, that, that's not going to call them to change. No. But if they, they realize where they're at is not acceptable, that, this will get people to, to think. I mean, some people, that it may never change, but some people, I know for myself, I'll just tell you, say for myself, like Brother Bob was saying, there's some saints that are sensitive enough and really do have enough uh, understanding to say, you know what, you're dead to me. And that wakes some people up. Oh, yeah. It did me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yes, Brother Bob. This text doesn't, isn't targeted to make the saints suspicious of people and say, well, you know, what if they're doing this? Yeah. We're talking about people who are actively doing these yeah. things that he talks right. about. Yeah. And there's no, you know, sinners sin. That's what they do. And, yeah. and, and it's, if, see, if you're, if you're open with your sin, there's going to be a price tag with yeah. you. Yeah. And that price tag means that you can't, you can't be around some people. They won't Amen. allow you to. But see, this, it isn't like you say, well, well, what if they're doing this? No, that, that's not, that's not really what we've been called to do but see if someone's going to sin right in your face you got to tell them no i can't you can't do that i'm, I'm going to leave the room now yeah I, i'm not going to be a part Amen. of this Amen. see if, if if you say well what if they're thinking this way maybe your life will help them to not yes. think that way Amen. see this is how you have to think about the matter Amen. you don't speculate about whether these people in their minds are thinking uh -huh. these things because we don't know that's right but if this is, if they haven't committed the deed outwardly, maybe you're suspicious that they are leaning this way, then shine bright. Maybe your life will help to change the way they think. Yeah, praise God. Yeah, good brother Aaron. 
this uh, word that you are darkness, of course, Paul included himself in that. And he said in uh, one of the letters, that according to the law, I was found blameless. That's right. Yeah. And so at the same time that Paul was dark, or Saul was darkness, he was also found blameless. blameless. Uh -huh. So it tells us that yeah, the church right. can be successful in restraining its outward expressions, but it's still condemned for what it is. Amen. 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 It would have broke out if he hadn't yes. been apprehended. <laughs> yes, brother. You know, even we see uh, King David, who was uh, supposedly amongst the people that are that are called by God's name. Yeah. But he starts out his psalm by saying, walk not in the counsel of, of the God. ungodly. Uh -huh. That's right. So, I mean, he, he saw that right from, oh, yeah. right from the beginning That's right. of what he wanted to open up to people. Uh -huh. okay. Sit in a certain seat and yeah. walk in a certain way. Yeah. That's right. He saw that. Saw the contaminated influence of it. Yeah. See that you are darkness and you are light tells us that what we do is just an evidence of what we are. are. That's, That's right. right. Amen. The, the Satan has been successful in, in spinning the issues uh -huh. around and uh, convincing people that if, if you can just keep from mm -hmm. from doing it, then you'll be okay without regards to what you yeah. are. Yeah. But you, you must be born again. That, uh -huh. That's why, one of Amen. the reasons why we must be born again, because you are darkness. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, there used to be an old popular song when I was a boy called You Can't Go to Hell for What You're Thinking. <laughs> that was on the top ten. <laughs> yeah. And they had a bunch of verses to confirm that. You could just look all you want. And yeah. Another thing is that, you know, you this this um, um you you once were darkness now, which means that darkness if you allow it to, it can have a strong appeal to you because this oh, yeah. is what you came out of. That's right. So this, the, the, you, we talked last week about some doors that you may have opened some doors back here that you, you knew you shouldn't have done them. Yeah. You repented of it, and yet those things, you got to stay away from That's those right. things. Yeah. They'll have a, they have a more of an appeal to you than someone who's never been familiar yeah. with them. You have to sort of speak padlock those yes, doors. Yes, amen. Yeah, you have to put a lock on them. <laughs> All right, we'll have a closing word. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the candor of your scripture and how you have informed us of these things and the outcome of them all. We most of all thank and praise thee for making us light and bringing an end to, the, to us being darkness. Oh, we praise thee for this, Heavenly Father, and accept our gratitude in Jesus Christ. Amen.